Hi friends, welcome to Nessa's Nook. Um, I wanted to bring you this video. I was asked by Angela over at the Inquisitive Farm Wife to be in the um, Freeze Dry February 23 um, collab, which I gratefully uh, accepted because I've had my freeze dryer now uh, since December of 22. And um, as you'll see like in the video, it, it doesn't show all the food that I do have because I don't have time for that. <laughs> but anyways, you're going to see me, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to see me actually go ahead and clean my unit the way I clean my unit. You're going to see how um, I have my, my pans. You're going to see some of the things that I do. Um, you're going to see how I store some of my food. And um, hopefully that's going to be very nice for you. Now, obviously, um, this has been going on all month. And there will be people down um, under, you know, after me because each person has their own day which is very nice thank you Angela but you guys are gonna want to you know tell you know you're gonna want to obviously watch the videos um, subscribe to the pages if, if that's something that you know uh, happens to strike your fancy and every week on Fridays she gives a giveaway away I believe at four o'clock uh, central standard time and um, then the grand prize is actually going to be a medium freeze dryer given right actually from Harvest Right Freeze Dryer. Now, obviously, if you're one of those people that's actually had a freeze dryer on layaway, they will actually um, like give you back, give back your money. Or if you wanted to have two freeze dryers, which almost anybody who has a freeze dryer says they would actually take a second one in a heartbeat. So... You know, it's never too late to even have a second one if you don't even have one now. Um, I was watching through some of the videos, and it's just amazing how all of us have a freeze dryer, but we all do things kind of like a little bit different. Um, there are a, a lot of freeze dryer um, pages on Facebook, and on YouTube. Um, I know Brian, he's he's given some of the stuff from Retired at 40, Live Life Simple. Um, he's, he's really great. I mean, he's just a wonderful guy. And... Um, it's just very nice to have that. So, I mean, obviously, uh, watch the videos. Um, please like, share, subscribe to all the people. To get into the drawing, though, to win any of the prizes, you have to actually leave comments. And obviously, there's like 30 of us. So to leave comments on each one of those, that's going to give you 30 chances to win a medium freeze dryer. Now, I don't know exactly what the prices are. I'm thinking the medium freeze dryer is about $2,800. I don't know about you. I would love a $2,800 free freeze dryer. So, obviously, you know, if, if you like what you see, you know, subscribe to me, you know, everything like that. Definitely subscribe to the other people on here. I've learned a lot myself, even though I know how to freeze dry. Um, so, this has just been a really, really great video. Thank you again, Angela, and having everybody lined up the way that you have. I think this has been a very, very good um, uh, learning experience for most of us, and um, thank you all. And after this, you're going to see me, um, I would put my video together, and you will see me actually uh, freeze-drying um, like little steak bites and what they look like afterwards. So you'll see like the process of, of what I did to um, get them going. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, obviously put them down in the comments. I'll be more than glad to answer anything that you have. And um, watch the rest of my video. And thank you very much for stopping by. You have a very blessed and wonderful day. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to show you how I personally take care of and I clean my freeze dryer. Because usually when my husband's, um, when I want to clean it, my husband's not here like today again. He's at work and I'm here. I'm just on lunch. So I'm going to show you what I do to take care of mine. Um, I'm not for sure um, if everybody went through how like I do mine. And I'm sure we all probably do ours differently. But I'll show you how I do mine. So I'm going to bring you over here a little bit. And it's got the ring around here. And this will not come out at all until this ring is taken off. And as you can see, whatever I did in here last, I don't remember. Oh, can you see the stuff that's on the ring? Okay, so it's very important that when you do clean your freeze dryer, you also clean your ring out very well. 
Now, I was having a little bit of problems with my freeze dryer, which there for a minute, um, you know, I thought I had a $4,000 paperweight. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's been fixed. My husband did all the upgrades and I will be probably at the very end of this. I'll show the videos of the stuff that we did buy. So if you do ever get a freeze dryer and you do have any issues, I would start off, honestly, if you do buy a new freeze dryer, I would just, while well, this is sitting there for the 24 hours, cause it has a set there for 24 hours is I would just go ahead and do that maintenance that is going to cause you, cause you not to have a lot of problems in the future so anyways my loads were taking forever and like I said I learned that it's very important that you do not overstack your trays even though it can hold a certain amount of poundage per tray it's not wise to go to that extent you know what I'm saying I mean I have found if I put less on my trays the whole cycle just works a lot better but the reason why this is in here is when my loads were going for a very long time, the ice would build up against this bottom rack and it would make it very, very, very hard to um, make sure this bottom rack stayed, you know, or dried properly and everything like that. It, I haven't had that problem, but I still go ahead and use these. I wash these off before these go in also. But because like I said, my husband isn't here. And so what I do is I have a table right down here. I just have one of these like little TV trays and I leave that in here for this reason. So what's going to happen is, well, I'm just leave, going to go ahead and leave it down here so you can see it when it comes down. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and I am going to go ahead and put this just upside down on this tray. Now, because I'm not super good with electronics and some people say you can, um, you know, unplug this and plug this too much and it could cause problems. And I don't really want to do that. So I don't, um, you're, you're probably, you're supposed to, I mean, so definitely follow the instructions. Don't go what I do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be spraying out the inside. And what this is, is just a little bit of a Dawn rubbing alcohol and water mixture. And I go ahead and spray out the whole inside. Because if I hopefully get that meat cut up, I can start a batch to hopefully be able to show you guys a load too. So what I do, because I'm short, I'm only five foot three. What I do is, it would be nice if I turn this up to you, okay? And I sprayed the whole inside with this. But because I can't really reach this back drum very well and it still needs to be cleaned out I just take my wooden um, spoon thing and I just clean this up and get that all nice and clean back there and everywhere you can't really reach that comes in very handy okay so now I can reach the rest of it myself you know with my arm so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this out. You're gonna wipe, want to wipe out on top and everything. All right. Now, let me see here. Hold on. I had to flip that around a little bit. So I do actually clean out my tray liners pretty much the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray in that some of that solution. I'll be doing that from both sides. Now, I did actually buy the cleaner that Brian from Retired at 40 suggested to buy. But I just really like doing it this way. And then he's got, he found a brush. But I just take my wooden spoon thing or wooden spatula and I just go in there and I clean the trays, or the, see there's something right there. And then you're gonna wanna try to make sure the, this tray holder stays clean. 
because from my understanding, when you have stuff stuck on here, it could make the unit, make it feel like um, it's drier or not as dry as it should be. And it could affect the drying, which I don't want to do because the last thing you want to do is spend more time doing this with loads because loads already take usually a minimum of 24 hours anyway. So I go through and I do both sides. And like I said, this is what I have found is easiest for me. And those trays look pretty good to me. So I bring this back around. I'm gonna put this at pause real quick again. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing now is when we do actually put this tray back in here, um, I don't yank on it or anything. I just kind of like, I'll be holding it up once I get this tray actually in the opening here. And it is kind of a little bit heavy. Um, and then I just take the cord so it doesn't get twisted or anything back there, okay? Then what I do is, maybe that'll show the door over there, yeah. I have another rag that's clean here. And what you're gonna wanna do is always make sure because you're wanting to make, making sure that the ring is super clean, you know, the connection to the ring is clean. So I always make sure I wipe both sides of the door very well. And just hold it as good as you can so it's not bouncing around. Get that one more clean real quick. I found if you actually take the extra time and try to make sure this stays clean, that everything stays clean, that you usually don't have the problems that others do have. I think when you kind of get lazy, in which we all, anybody who has a freeze dryer can tell you we've all gotten lazy. Um, so if it's you that happens to be winning the freeze dryer, try not to get lazy. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put some more of the solution on the ring here. Because like I said, there was something that was actually on there okay and then I'll also I'll show you because I don't know for sure I don't know if I've ever seen this on a video um, and I try to do this about every second or third clean I don't do it on every single one of them but on the back side here that's what goes around the door okay and there's a lot of times, now see this is still good from the last time I did it, so I'm not going to have to do that. But there's stuff that gets caught from around the door that will go in here that can cause issues too. So to put this back on, you just go ahead and just push this back on. And that's good to go. Now if you look up here, I have stuff stored up there. <laughs> Um, but what I have is, this is actually a, um, camera that we have, like a camera system around the house. And what this does is it's pointed. I just have this, uh, Velcroed at the top, up on the top there. And it doesn't matter if I'm home or not home. I can see where the cycle is. If in the middle of the night, if there's anything, I can, um, just pull up my phone and just say, oh, geez, yeah, right there. You know, it's got so many hours or it just went into um, dry mode or whatever have you. I do highly recommend getting a camera, um, especially if it's not in the same room that you have your equipment in. So what I'm going to do is put some more liquid on my rag here. And then I'll be putting these back in there. Now my husband, he just cut this down for me to the right size. And like I said, I don't believe I even need these anymore. But what I just do is I just put that on the side and it just sets there on each side. Okay. 
and there we go. I mean, that way this is all ready to go. As soon as I get that meat cut up, I can go ahead and start this. And then what you're going to do is um, once I get cutting on the, on the meat, I'm going to go ahead and get this to get getting cold because it won't be frozen. I don't have room in my freezer still to pre-freeze anything, even though I cleaned out my freezers the other day. Um, so what I usually just do is I, a lot of times I have to do straight from, um, straight from actual, you know, whatever it is. And it does take a few more hours, but it's okay. But I will bring you back here um, once I um, get the meat in here and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'll show you a little bit more of the freeze dryer room. Also, while I was in here, I wanted to show you something. So I have a large freeze dryer and I highly recommend if you are one that happens to be winning this, that you buy more trays, okay? Everything I have here obviously is for a large, not the medium. Um, I'm not for sure if Harvest Right would let you pay the difference and get a bigger one. They even have the extra large one, which I'm kind of jealous of, but whatever. But I have 15 trays and I have 10 lids. Now, these are the lids that Brian from Retired at 40 sells. And they work very nicely and they have like the little lips so when you're stacking these it does like that and it keeps the food from getting all messy which makes it very nice now this one you cannot put inside the freeze dryer um and like i said that's that one from retired at 40 we live life simple brian very wonderful guy i love him then we have what is the harvest right lids these ones could actually be used, and I have used them when I've had a whole bunch of stuff and I did have room in my <laughs> freezers. This is the lid also, but it doesn't have anything to keep the, the you know the containers from moving around. Um, that's the down the downfall on this one. But it's got its good thing where you can actually store more things in here to get these freeze dried. And then um, up here. In some of my other videos, I'm trying to get a better angle here, I actually have a lot of my freeze-dried stuff that is not in long-term storage. I keep it in the half-gallon jars or a quart jar. I actually have another shelf over here, which I'll be showing you. And then over here, which I'll be showing you too, is I do have the Avid Armor um, uh, chamber vac and it helps vacuum seal the stuff really super tight so your stuff is looking like this you know like a, a like a food saver would so this makes it really nice now if you do ever get a chamber vac don't be stupid like me even though the writing is right here if you get a bigger bag and your stuff is further up here it sometimes makes it harder to read put whatever's in your bag closer to the top because once it starts shrinking it's very hard to read what you wrote even though you wrote nicely but I have all that there okay let me put you on pause here my husband built me these shelves too which I still have to figure out if we're gonna paint them stain them or whatever but it works just the way it is for right now so that's all that matters then up here all these boxes there's six boxes up there that's full of freeze-dried food and it's all different things um, I really need to get around and um, mark like what's in the boxes so it's easier for me. Then below here in these totes that there's actually more freeze-dried stuff here. I actually have I actually have more freeze-dried stuff in other closets. I have some up here and this other shelf in here. Um, I have a lot of stuff freeze dried. I've had my freeze dryer since December of 22. Um, I got really, really sick, went to the hospital, uh, January of 22. I didn't come home till March. I didn't have the energy or anything to do this because these trays are heavy. Then you have to stand here and prep the food and, and, and you know, carry the trays with the food, which the trays already are super heavy. Um, so I did not do any freeze drying until, um, 
probably the end of, um, at least the end of April, I would say. Then I finally started re um, freeze drying. I was telling my husband, I said, I was thinking about selling my freeze dryer because I'm like, it's sitting here, you know, and it's, it's so nice, um, to have, but if I wasn't going to use it and I didn't know how good I would feel. So I was like, I, oh, I might sell it, but let me flip this around here real quick. My husband is very, very nice to me and he wanted to make sure that the things that we had, you know, made sense and everything like that. So he went and bought me this super, really nice, um, uh, a tool chest here and of course my premium pump is there and my fans I gotta clean my fans still but one thing he did for me is anybody knows you have your um, release valve there he actually made it so it doesn't move he's actually got it um, velcro to a um, he's got it screwed into the wood but the woods actually velcro to the tabletop but he did one thing better <laughs> he actually took the drain holes and he put a little hole in the floor and he hooked the drain up to the drain that's in the basement so I no longer have to drain and in a five gallon bucket which makes me very happy okay I have two minutes left of the cooling time I don't know what I was thinking and my lack of thinking probably um, but I got my meat cut up and this is just various steaks that was in the freezer we actually cleaned out our freezers, well, two of the three freezers, this weekend. And I had bought a whole bunch of steaks before we had gotten sick. And I obviously did not pay any attention to how much I had. And then I kept buying more steaks. So I don't know for sure if I'm going to need more on each tray. So I'm just going to kind of put a little bit... Now what I plan to do with these is um, when we do reconstitute it to actually um, make like these into the um, bites of the steak bites and um, uh, butter and garlic steak bites. But with this being hardly no steak on each one. This is going to dry in like very quick time. And then of course, anytime you're freeze drying, that usually how you want to have like the, the fat on the meat, when you're freeze drying you don't because fat is definitely an um, I mean, I did leave some of the fat on here, but not very much. But as you can see, each tray doesn't hardly have any um, meat on it, so it's going to dry really fast. I'm going to wash my hands real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, you're going to see there it says it's been the 15 minutes. It's okay to go ahead and open this up. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Start putting the trays in here. Trying to get a little bit better angle in here. Sorry about that, guys. But like I said, with this little bit of meat, it's going to uh, not take as long to do. Hopefully, I'll hear this when it goes on. Dry, and I want you to know about how long this took on this batch here. All right, so what's going to happen is you go ahead and you close the door. While you close the door, you're looking around the seal. You've already looked at your oil tank and everything. And what happens is then you look back up here. I'm going to close the valve over here, and I go ahead and hit continue. All right. Now what happens is it says that's freezing. That's gonna be going on for anywhere, you know, uh, two to seven-ish hours. Then it will start the drying process. Hopefully I can at least take pictures of it and let you guys know. But um, 
it's really nice, obviously, to have the freeze dryer and the freeze dried foods. Um, obviously, when I had first, I mean, I seen a freeze dryer years ago. I wanted one, but really, what made me want to do this more? Um, this room that I'm in, it used to be a, a spare bedroom uh, when we moved here. It was supposed to be my mom's bedroom. Um, she, but she died before um, we. I took possession of the house, so she never lived here. This was just a spare bedroom for a long time, and then one of my exchange students' bedroom, and so on. But so meanwhile, it's become an extended pantry, and the freezer works very well in here. My bedroom is just across the hall, so if there's any errors, I can hear that. But it's very nice if you know you're wondering or like myself. Uh, like last year when they're going, oh, the winter's going to be so difficult. Everybody's going to be with no heat and no electricity and this and that and that, you know. And it's very scary for a lot of people. Where the freeze dryer, to me, for our family, it could take a lot of the fear out because knowing that, you know, even if my freezer went bad, now granted, I've got a lot more steaks still out in my freezer. But knowing that I have shelf-stable steaks, I mean, obviously, because this has got fat on it, it's not going to be um, nowhere near the 25-year shelf life, even maybe the five. I'm thinking one or two shel years of shelf life, if that. Um, but I will have steak, you know, that I can do. I have hamburger patties. It's raw. It works just well on that. Um, one of my favorite things is actually the hamburger crumbles, which I can show you at a different time. Um, I, I don't have a lot of the stuff you see, you see behind me. Most of this stuff is just individuals. Now I do have over on that shelf that I showed you, I have some soups, um, some noodle stuff and stuff like that. But for the most part, I make most of my stuff individually. Now I was talking to Brian and I was talking to Brenda at Retired at 40. I am actually in their cookbook too. Um, but it's very nice to actually have the individual things because you may not know you know what the situation is going to be like a year from now or two years or <clears throat> whatever and this way you have the individual stuff if you wanted to put it in this instead of that you know instead of maybe what you might have it set out for um, but I have I have a lot of pounds of uh, the crumbled hamburger like I said that is probably other than the onions and green peppers um, that is probably my number one thing. I did do a little bit of candy and ice cream and stuff when I first started the freeze dryer. I'm not a super big fan of it. I mean, I know people go absolutely crazy over Skittles and the such. I don't even like the frozen and the freeze dried Skittles, honestly. But, you know, I mean, each person has their own thing. I mean, I do like some milk duds and some um, saltwater taffy, and I actually love um, chewy sprees. Now, them are good too. But, you know, obviously, I don't need more candy in my life, and I already eat probably too much that's not even freeze-dried, but whatever. But it's really nice when you have it on your shelf that you have all sorts of stuff um, done. I mean, I've done, like, like even like right here, this is actually tomato paste. Um, you know, because how when you open up the can, how you, uh, how you, yeah, if you open up the can, it's like, what do I do with the rest of this? So... I bought some, now that does take a long time to reconstitute, but you know, it still works. But it's nice that you know that you have your individual components. And if you're not doing that with your freeze dryer, I would highly re recommend maybe possibly doing that because, like you said, I mean, there might be times that you want onions on something and someone don't like onions or, you know, whatever have you. <clears throat> so it works out that way. But um, I'll keep an eye on this. I'll keep the thing on this. I don't keep a log like a lot of people do because I don't use my freeze dry items like a lot of people do because I don't do, like, I mean, I have, um, I have eggs, um, obviously like eggs and, um, the cheeses and, uh, uh, spaghetti sauce and stuff. You don't, you have to put little by little by little in there. You just don't go all willy nilly. But I just like when I'm, reconstituting the vegetables and stuff I just throw a whole bunch of water in there and then I just dump out the extra water but that's on you it's gonna be whatever it is that you choose that you want to do so I will keep you posted on this and um, maybe even take some screenshots that you'll see like at the end of this video if you want to pay attention I did find the pictures of the stuff that I was talking about so if you are the lucky winner of the freeze dryer 
I would highly recommend pre-ordering this stuff, have it in stock, weld this as a set for the 24 hours, make those changes so that you should not have any of the problems. There are many of uh, Facebook groups that have stuff to do with um, freeze drying. Of course, YouTube is just full of stuff from the freeze drying because it's becoming uh, more and more every day. So definitely, you know, um, check that out at the end. And um, hopefully before this video is out, I can show you uh, the, the end result of the steak so you can see what it looks like before and afterwards. So I'll be back. Okay, friends, here's the big reveal. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. This has actually been on extra dry time. I have mine scheduled for 24 hours of extra dry time just in case something does happen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I'm going to go ahead and open up the valve over here. This will not open until all the pressure is out, kind of like a pressure cooker, you know, something to that effect. I don't know if you're sure if you can see the amount of ice that is in the sides. Alright, I can open up the door now. And you want to check for like cold spots. And none of this feels cold at all. I let this keep going up here until I've checked it because I don't want to have to rerun a whole new batch just to finish up some dry time. So this is all good. So I'm not going to be reusing it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and hit no defrost. And what that's going to do is it's going to shut everything down and it's going to go ahead and um, defrost that and it's going to go out the pipe and into the basement because that's what my husband did for me. So go ahead and take these out. I don't know for sure if I'll be putting some in a bag too or just in a container. Now, I never, just like my washers, I never shut the door all the way. This way, you know, you don't have mold and mildew and the such. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of this steak off here and start putting this in the half gallon container. Because like I said, I like to store mine. I mean, stuff that I don't like, mylar bags, I do. Um... If it's not going to be long, long term, which, you know, this will not be, um, there's no reason to open up and ruin a Mylar bag because those are very expensive. And yes, I will be happy to put some in a Mylar bag because it's going to fill up, it's going to fill up these, uh, this half gallon very nicely. But I got one out just to be on the safe side, and I'm glad I did. Almost forgot a piece there. All right. Shake that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up my O2 absorbers. I'm going to throw two of them in there. And then you'll see how this works here. So I make sure there's nothing on the rim. Put the lid on there. And then you'll see I have other videos talking about these and these um, uh, silicone ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And there's a little hole at the top. And I put this in here. It's going to get a little bit loud. I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. Now while I'm doing this by myself, this is actually just from like the dollar store. But this really helps hold open these bags. Especially when you're filling them yourself. 
and it kind of helps keep the bag a little bit open, which is very, very nice. And this key, this jar is now sealed. I actually heard it vacuum seal, and that noise you're hearing there is the ice starting to melt from the freeze dryer. And at the very end of this video um, will be actually those parts that I was talking about. So stay past this or, you know, if you're not watching the whole thing, um, know that uh, there is actually a video, or I mean uh, pictures, showing the things that you're going to want to buy as far as um, making the changes when you first get this. So you can actually, um, while you're waiting for the 24 hour period, you can actually change everything over. So you shouldn't have to have the problems that I did where, you know, your machine just sits there. While you're waiting for H, you know, harvest rights, customer service, which is very good customer service, by the way. A lot of people say it's not, but it, the people that I've dealt with has been very nice. All right, then. I go ahead and pull this out and I kind of give this a little bit of a shake. Now what I'm going to do, I know it's kind of hard to see from this angle, is I'm putting this actually in my um, Gavit Armor chamber back. Alright, make sure that you have no creases in this line. This is already set up to how I want it on the front. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, seal and, um, you know, take the air out. I put my hand on here for about 20 seconds or so. You'll see this dial, I don't know for sure if you can see it on the video. I don't think you can, but there's a dial there. And what that does is that starts the process. I forgot the, I'm going to have to open that back up here. Okay, well, I just did that wrong. Anywho, I'm going to have to open this back up and put in some, um, oh, it didn't seal good. Put in some oxygen absorbers. I'm going to go ahead and put two of them in here too. And I always try to make sure that I'm very quick about this. Um, get, get the oxygen absorbers and the, and the things in there because um, air is not good. I never understood how dry you can have everything with just that plastic lid once you open it up. And it actually does very good. I don't understand that. So once I see the needle moving over here, I just let my hand loose. And then I'll go ahead and take this off. Take this off. And this is all nice and sealed. And then there's your steak. I do leave the rings on mine. I'll find a place on the shelf for this. I'll clean up my mess on my first break. But you're going to see, so what's going to happen is it, it put in some air, and it's it's coming down, and all of a sudden it's going to go, and it's going to suck all the air out, and it's going to seal this. Now, some people will sit there who have harvest right, they actually have um, that other, uh, you can see. You can see the seal mark and everything. But look how nice and tight they made that steak. So um, if you have the money, there is um, actually on Brian's site, there's like a 10% off coupon on most of his stuff. Um, I'm supposed to be an affiliate with them, but they've never really got back a hold of me. So I don't understand how that's going to work. But it just shows you a little bit of the stuff of how this is done. I'm not going to show that being reconstituted because I don't have anything that I want to stake in right now. 
But this kind of shows you the process, and I hope this helped. Like I said, stay to the end. There will be some pictures of some different drying times and um, what it looked like before I opened up the door here. And then those, um, those, uh, um, the materials you need to make this so you shouldn't hopefully have any problems. So thank you for watching the collab. Please comment and um, make it so you are in the drawing. Comment on everybody's video, a, a nice, sincere comment. And um, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope this helps you decide if you do want to get a freeze dryer. So have a nice day. Bye.